Hi everyone, and welcome to my channel. Today, I'd like to discuss a Photoshop adjustment that a lot of photographers tend not to use. But in terms of color adjustment, it's really one of the most powerful tools in Photoshop to fine tune color. I'm talking about the selective color adjustment. I'd like to show you what it can do and how it compares to the hue saturation adjustment and to the color balance adjustment. And if these sort of topics sound interesting to you, I'd certainly appreciate your support by having you click on that subscribe button below. Let's have a look at selective color. So let's compare some of the types of adjustments we can make to the colors in our images using Photoshop adjustment layers. To demonstrate, I'm going to use this photograph that I took in Hocking Hills, which is just outside of Columbus, Ohio. For comparison, I'm going to add a color balance adjustment layer, a hue saturation adjustment layer, and a selective color adjustment layer. Probably the easiest adjustment effect to see is color balance because it tends to make such large changes. So to demonstrate that, let's just enlarge our photograph a little bit so that we can see any changes a little better. And Let's go to the color balance layer. Now, using color balance, you can apply your changes to the highlights, the midtones, or the shadows throughout the entire image. So you're going to be adjusting not a specific color per se, but the color of a specific tonal range. So, for example, if you wanted to warm the photo, you might choose the midtones and warm. But as you can see, everything is getting warmer. Every color is getting warmer. All the colors in the midtones. Or you could cool all the midtones. Now, this can be useful if you want to just do some warming or cooling or general changes to color throughout. A specific tonal range as opposed to a specific color. It could be particularly useful, for example, if you wanted to, say, take your highlights and make them a little warm, take your shadows, make them a little cooler, and thereby, in effect, doing a type of split toning to your photograph. But in terms of adjusting a very specific color across the entire tonal range of that color. It's certainly not the way or the best tool that we would use to fine tune a color. I'm going to go delete our color balance layer now. And next we have hue saturation. Now the hue saturation adjustment layer does let us be more specific in regards to the hue saturation or lightness adjustment of any color. And we can see the colors we can adjust in our drop down. And we can see we have our R, G, B, C, M, and Y. But there are some limitations. It's very difficult to fine tune. Plus, it tends to change tonal values when it shifts the colors. And trying to restore the tonal value with the lightness slider is an extreme exercise in futility if you're trying to get your image to look really good. So let's go ahead and use the hue saturation adjustment layer. Let's say we want to adjust the color of these rocks and stones. Well, it looks like there's a good deal of yellow in them. So we can come over here to the color drop down and we can choose our yellows. And now by using the hue slider, we can push the color of the rocks to a little more yellow green or a little bit more to the red magenta. Now, it can be a little tough to fine tune, although, I mean, in theory, you can adjust these one by one. But in addition to the rocks, take a look at these trees here. I'll turn the adjustment layer on and off. You can see that we've changed the color of the trees as well. And that's because the trees have some yellow in them. Now there's a, two ways we can deal with this. Probably the easiest way is to choose our brush tool with a soft brush. 
and make sure we're on the mask. And by painting with black, we can paint out easily the changes to some of these trees. And again, I'm not doing it very carefully now. But now you can see if I turn the layer on and off, there's still some change to the trees, but it's really mostly uh, related to the rocks. And, you know, one can be more careful. Uh, the other option, if we get rid of that mask and turn it back to white again, is we can try adjusting the greens in the trees. And by doing that, well, we can sort of tweak the greens in the trees a little bit. But because certain parts of the trees have more yellow than the other, it can give a little bit of an un unnatural look. And it's tough a little bit to fine tune it and really make it look perfect. But now let's look at selective color because that's really where we get the ability to fine tune things. I'm going to get rid of the hue saturation layer. We'll delete that. And now we have our selective color layer. So now things get really interesting. Here in the selective color adjustment, we have a drop down, just like in the hue saturation, and we have our R, G, B, C, M, and Y. But also, which we did not have in the hue saturation slider, we also have whites, neutrals, and blacks. And I'll have a bit more to say about those later. But like before, let's try adjusting the yellow in these rocks by choosing yellows from the drop down menu. Now, if we want to make those rocks a little redder in color, we can now be very specific, very specific about the actual adjustment by what is essentially adding or subtracting data from other color channels. We can, for example, try to make the rocks a little bit redder by adjusting our cyans and taking out some of the cyan. We can add some magenta in. And by turning this on and off, you can see that we've really, I've exaggerated it a little bit so it shows in the video more than I would have done. But you can very finely adjust the coloration of those rocks. And the adjustment that we've made is really much finer and much more specific than using the hue saturation adjustment. Plus, if we want, we can also add or subtract a bit of black to either lighten or darken and change the tonal value of our color adjustment in a way that's much more pleasing than using the lightness slider in hue saturation. Here I've made the color darker and we can switch and make the color lighter. Now, let's leave it around here. Just like in hue saturation, we've changed the color of these trees and very similar to the problem solving with hue saturation, we can either paint in black on the layer mask or we can go to the greens and make some fine adjustments to the colors of the greens and try to get the greens looking a little more natural. And I think, uh, I think this does give a bit of a more natural and better looking result than playing with the greens and the hue saturation because we can adjust things in so much finer increments here. Now let's touch on some other advantages of selective color. As I mentioned before, the color dropdown, in addition to the colors, also has whites, neutrals, and blacks. So first off, let's say we wanted to add a cooler tint to this waterfall. Well, the waterfall falls into the white highlights. We can choose whites. And to give a blue tint to it, we just have to subtract a bit of yellow, since blue and yellow are essentially opposites. And... You can see that by adjusting that, we can add a blue tint to the white waterfall. Secondly, in a way sort of similar to the color balance adjustment layer, we can use selective color 
To do some split toning or cross-processing, let's say we wanted to add a warmer tone to the highlights. Well, we can take our whites and then move our yellow slider up to give it a warmer tone. Again, we don't necessarily want to do that in this image because we wanted to add a cooler tone to the waterfall, but there may be some images uh, often where you want to give a little warm tone to your highlights and you can go to the blacks and add, by subtracting some yellow, add a little bit of a cooler tone to the shadows. And you can adjust how light or dark they are. You know, you can go overboard, obviously. But you can use, get sort of a split toning effect using selective color as well. So just one final point to the use of the selective color adjustment layer. I hadn't mentioned before, but there are these two buttons, relative and absolute. The way these work is relative is a much finer control because what it does is, for example, if I'm adjusting the yellows and I'm moving the magenta slider, it adjusts the magenta in the yellows in a way that is dependent upon how much magenta is in there to start with. With absolute, it's a very linear control. So, for example, had we done all of these adjustments, so here's here's the image with the adjustments, without the adjustments, with the adjustments, all done under relative. Had we done this under absolute, you can see that the changes would be far more dramatic. Now, of course, you could have left it at absolute and just made less of a change with the slider each time. But I find that really I prefer to use relative and that allows you to really make changes that are far more subtle and controlled than if you had been on absolute. Well, I do hope you found this discussion about selective color useful and that if it's in type of adjustment that you haven't been using, that you might consider giving it a try. It really is a very powerful tool to have at your disposal for fine-tuning color in Photoshop. I'm Howard, and my channel is about introducing viewers to photographers who inspire, to discussing all sorts of photographic topics, and to enhancing creativity with Photoshop and Lightroom tutorials. And if those topics sound interesting to you, I'd certainly appreciate your support of the channel by having you click on the subscribe button below. I hope to see you next time.